All right. Let's get this started. Welcome to the Board of Adjustments meeting for April 2024. Uh, we'll start us off with Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Strickland, if you would lead us in the invocation. Sure. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to come together as community and work together. Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless Andrew. We're thankful for a town where we feel free and where we feel safe. And we just lift up all of the places around the world who are suffering and in so much turmoil. And we just ask that you stay in control of those situations. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we have got the minutes in our packet from last time. Um, if there's any discussion about it, we can have that. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to approve them. I make a motion that we approve them. All those in favor, raise your right hand. That's unanimous. All right, we have one item on the agenda tonight. Let us start by swearing in the witnesses for that. If you're going to present testimony tonight and not just opinion, uh, then Miss Hardaway will swear you in for that, and we'll get rolling on it. All right, <clears throat> we have a special use permit application. Jeff, would you like to present that to us and then we'll open a public hearing. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Tonight we have a special use application from Travis Bailey um, for a light manufacturing um, use within a new commercial building that is under construction at 810 North Broad Street East. Um, the screen here. Turn it on. That's the agenda. The request again is for light manufacturing. The zoning is general commercial. In general commercial, light manufacturing is a special use permit. So you have any use that rises to the definition of light manufacturing. And in this case, is a cabinet shop. So where they will be manufacturing cabinets. In a retail sales and office component will will go along with the the cabinet shop, but primarily the use is going to be the cabinet shop, the manufacturing of cabinets. So that's light manufacturing in in general commercial. This is the property it used to be a car dealership um, some some years ago. Currently, there's a equipment um, sales at 836. 810 is the new location for the new building where the uh, existing um, parking lot was for the, for the car dealership. Uh, so the, the building is under construction now. You probably, if you've rode by there, you've seen some, some work being done. Um, I think some staging is, is happening right now, but the building itself was approved a few months ago. The building is a permitted use within General Commercial um, and all the associated um, things that would go along with building um, a commercial building in, in town, such as driveways, parking lots, landscaping, sidewalks. Those were all part of the original approved plan. So what we're looking at tonight is just the use within the building itself. And in our ordinance, it, again, it states that for the a light manufacturing in general commercial, it's a special use permit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is the building that's gonna be built. So it's um, partially brick, partially metal. Um, the west elevation is what you will see along Broad Street, and then these are the various elevations around the building itself, with some roll-up doors and some uh, entry doors uh, for workers. Um, 
Mr. Bailey is here. Travis Bailey and, and his dad are here to answer any questions that you may have. What you all are considering tonight are those special use permit criteria, so A through E. There's no additional criteria that the ordinance places on light manufacturing and general commercial. Sometimes there'll be a handful of additional criteria that you have to consider. In this case, it really is just, is this use um, not going to be injurious to uh, surrounding properties? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. With that, I'll open the public hearing. Uh, if one of you guys want to come up, uh, we've, we've familiarized ourselves with it, but if you don't mind, just really briefly, for people who might be watching or see it later, just kind of tell us what you'd like to do. And Jeff knows I can be a little bit long-winded, so I'll try to be very brief. Um, so um, I'm not offended to just tell to sit down. So oh, I got the same problem, so don't right. worry about it. Yep. Um, <laughs> so I grew up here. Um, we actually, my uh, the house that I grew up in is actually adjacent to this property, um, just up on the other side of Junie Road. And so I grew up going to um, this building. That's where our family's car dealership was. And in 2002, we sold it. Um, and so the dealers, not the building, but the, our business that was there. And my father leased the building uh, there at 836 North Broad Street to John Heaster Chevrolet at the time. And so they stayed about three years. And then we had um, a tenant in between CCS leasing the building from us and or from my dad and the car dealership and so ccs has been in that building about eight years now going on nine um they've had a very successful run since they've been in in the business but um they have a second location in youngsville and uh, which is their primary location and the the one of their general managers lives in uh willis springs jeep mcgee's kind of area and so he wanted to be closer to home instead of driving to Youngsville every day, and a lot of his clients were here. So they decided to lease the building. At the time, again, primary use had been a car dealership before, so they they could roll right in, right, and go to operating. So they had equipment sales, you know, repairs, et cetera. Well, over the last seven or eight years, um, there hadn't been a lot done to the building or to the property to be fair i mean they they've been paying rent they pay on time they're a great tenant um, i think they add a lot of benefit to the town you know however my dad uh this all started he was doing a little estate planning and so he wanted me to meet them and so i go over and i'm a banker now and i deal with commercial real estate is primarily what i deal with on a daily basis so I go with my father to uh, meet the tenants, and we got in the car. Dad said, what do you think? I said, well, they're very nice people. I said, but the, um, the issue is, is the building is somewhat deteriorating, primarily the parking lot. So this parking lot out adjacent where it has the 810 was basically being used as a cul-de-sac for, for trucks making deliveries. And they really didn't have to go out and turn around that way, but that's just what they were choosing to do because it was open space. Most of the equipment that they take in is already sold prior to delivery, and so there might be some hold over there until the person gets financing or picks it up, but a majority of it sold, so they didn't have a lot of use for the excess property. So we had a conversation with them about spending some money. So we actually spent um approximately three hundred and fifty thousand dollars give or take three hundred thousand somewhere in that range we're not quite done spending money yet but redoing the flooring redid the roof we repainted it we put gut new gutters on it we spent a good amount of money just you know updating that building for them and in turn they signed a extension of their lease so they'll stay in town I, they had had some conversation about looking at other uh, properties so we were able to secure them long term and then um, a part of our conversation with them was going out and building a building on another building on 810 and how this originally came up this 
wasn't something that my dad and I had originally intended to do. But when we started running the numbers of what, you know, they what they, we were going to be able to charge in rent and what it was going to cost to get that building where it was needed, we started thinking about, okay, we're going to go out here and resurface this parking lot or, or you know, and it's just going to keep getting torn up. And it's aesthetically, it's not going to look very good to the town. It's all that open space. This is the gateway coming in. So we started having conversations about building this other building. They signed off. They were okay with it. And so we had some conversations with the town. This goes back to when Sean was here. So we've been working on this for about two years. Um, and we got some logistical ideas in our brain from that meeting. And then later, uh, once we finally got the site plan done, we have, we have worked with uh, Brandon and, and several folks in the town just trying to get the site plan right from erosion control, stormwater, and all that. Um, and then we were able to meet Jeff, um, and he really helped kind of guide us to where we needed to go. And um, to be fair, I, I really had not intended on taking on all this when we originally started, but it's just kind of morphed into it. And to be honest, I'm, I think it's going to be a, a, a just a, a huge investment from the town's perspective because, again, we've committed to uh, putting in the sidewalk all the way down. Um, so we actually worked with Jeff in order to create a business park there um, instead of subdividing the parcel because mm -hmm. if we subdivided the parcel, we could have stopped the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, and so, <clears throat> but my dad and I talked about it, and we – we, for years, when we were in business here and growing up, it used to frustrate my dad and I when we would see things done to try to skirt certain things. Um, and so we we have preached that for so long, I felt like we had to kind of, you know, um, eat what we sow, so to speak. So we worked with Jeff. We, we put the site plan. We got that approved, and then we moved on to building plans. And then while we were having a um, – having the building plans drawn and working through that process, Ann Milton, who's a real estate broker in Lillington, um, and a friend introduced me to the potential tenant. This potential tenant is owns a cabinet shop and was, has been looking to relocate from Fuquay somewhere. Um, had not originally thought about Anger, but I got a call from Ann and I went and met with him and, um, sold him on the town and so the idea is the only reason the main reason he wants to move is he doesn't have an area in his current building that he's leasing that can that can house a retail storefront mm -hmm. and that's he wants to really be able to showcase his work um and, in, and then the building that he's in through this process has been sold so it'll be a while before it'll be redeveloped where he's at now, but still at the same time, he needs a more permanent location. So he's extremely excited about the opportunity. He plans on getting very involved with the chamber and other parts of our community here. And he's a very community minded person. Um, so I'll take any questions, uh, you know, that you might have in regards to the, to the use. I, I wasn't exactly sure it would require a special use permit. Um, and, you know, and Jeff actually explained that, you know, that it would, you know, just given the fact that he is going to be doing some, you know, um, work in the back to be able to, to, you know, assemble the, assemble the cabinets. Most of his clients are in Wake County and Cumberland County at this point. And so, um, but he needs a place for the customers to be able to come. And, and for a lot of them, this will be the first time they may have come to Andrew. Mm -hmm. So, All right. <clears throat> I'll start off by saying that this is the kind of business that we're trying to attract to Andrew right now. And yes, it's, it's a good spot that is underutilized right now yes, with sir. the space you have. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm in favor of it generally. The one question I have is are they going to be doing painting at this location too? They are. They are. They'll have a paint booth to be okay. able to paint the cabinets. So I just want to make sure, because I, I don't think that we as a town regulate the paint fumes or exhaust or anything, but there's got to be some state or OSHA regulations that would regulate the exhaust. 
from a cabinet paint Lee booth. Maybe able to help us out a little bit with that, but certainly the fire marshal would be involved whenever that um, aspect of the of the business gets okay. approved. Right now, what we've uh, approved is the shell building. Okay. And so an upfit permit will be associated with this special use permit. Okay. Where all those components to the business will be reviewed. So there's a stopgap somewhere yeah. to make sure that the fumes are properly correct ventilated. Correct. Yeah. Okay. He has one of those. He has one of those. Um, okay. He has yeah. one of those. Um, the high end pieces of equipment. Yeah. You know that um, manages all that, and he's actually talking to the manufacturer about moving it or just buying a new one. Okay. Um, yes, sir. But obviously, all that would go through that process. Yeah. Right. That's all I want to make sure. I've got. I've, I've got some cabinetry experience, so okay. painting is. Really, the the largest challenge at any location is whether or not you can paint, and then how highly it's regulated. So I just want to make sure that we're not going to be polluting the neighborhoods that are just south of this. I don't expect we will, but anyone else have any questions for them? Um, is are most of uh, what will be happening at this location happening inside the building or outside the building? Will yes. there be a lot of outside storage yeah. no so great great question thank you for asking that because that was another thing Mo anybody that knows my dad and i very well we're very neat people and um and that's one of the so i think i'm probably pretty crazy because we've ended up spending an enormous amount of money to get this back neat um so um if you look um this is the, the building will basically that was another one of my questions was are, are they going to be using that one entrance so, yeah, so there's a site, on the site plan approval there is an entrance place yep. here um there's going to be about 10 employees and what was really good is my dad and i did not want it was not our intention and general commercial allows a very broad view from an, a, a, a a tenant perspective but our view, we really did not want to have a laydown yard. Like we really didn't want to lease to someone that was going to have a bunch of equipment and stuff. Mm -hmm. And and again, not to to speak negative of the current tenant because they're a great company, a great business. But that's yeah. one of the things we're trying to create here is a little bit different environment for where they're they're kind of forced for their uh, display to be a little bit more metro. If that makes sense, more like a metro dealership instead of just having room to just park stuff all over the place. We're trying to create some specific parking for the equipment for sale and just create a little bit more of a flow. So the way it is created now, you'd be able to drive all the way around that building and ingress, egress on either side. What is the building to build inside and check out and inside? Yes, sir. So when he showed the plans, there's two back doors on the back. So mm -hmm. they'll the idea is is that they'll they'll pull pull in, and they don't have um, they're not gonna have a bunch of transfer trucks coming in and out for the purposes of the cabinet shop. Uh, but when they deliver uh, material, the idea would be to deliver the material here, and then uh, and then whenever they get the product. Then they would go out this side door, and all the the, uh, the doors and stuff would be installed back here on this corner, and then it will be put into the, the truck and just carried out. Yes, sir. We wanted to limit the number of vehicles, but really, and and the the um, the traffic, but also just. We just didn't want stuff like left there overnight, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, cabinet shop's good for that. There's not much you could store outside. Yes, that's right. yes sir. <laughs> Correct. Um, Jeff, do we have any ordinance that would prevent them from using shipping containers or accessory buildings for additional storage? Or So we would have a limit on accessory buildings mm -hmm. in, in the commercial zoning district. Um, storage containers like you would see mm -hmm. like on transfer trucks or what have you. I'd have to check that. I, I don't know if we 
don't allow that in commercial. Okay. I know in residential we don't, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure about commercial. Okay. And I guess at what length of stay would it become an accessory building if that, you know, sure, that sure. might be. Yeah. And we, we would hope that they'd come to us and have a conversation about that. Sure. And we're going to try to present that as the landlord. The current tenant has one out there now for just some stuff that they had moved out of the building while we were painting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess the plan would be <clears throat> that employees would probably park in the back. And do you have a site plan you can pull up here? Uh, I didn't include a site plan. Okay. Um, but as Travis has, has mentioned, there the building is here. There's parking on either side uh-huh. of the mm-hmm. building. And in between the current building and the new building is both parking and drive aisles. Okay. And then around the back of the building is a drive aisle with dumpster and the doors for deliveries so the goal is not to separate those with any kind of fence or anything or so it'll just be open or anything like that okay. yeah um travis mentioned that this business is a business park business park yeah. it was sure. it was more advantageous to call it that mm-hmm. uh, according to our our rules and regulations mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. to call it then to separate out the uses so mm-hmm. Um, the Baileys were, were receptive to calling it <laughs> Bailey Business Park on yeah. paper. Um, and so that's, that's how we've been, been looking at it and reviewing it. Um, so, yeah. Okay. And then we're going to do a pretty extensive amount of landscaping. It was we included in the site plan, like around mm-hmm. the buildings and down by the sidewalk and stuff. So. Okay. Yeah, I will say that part of this project is an off-site improvement that the town is working with the Baileys to that's the uh, sidewalk that's already sidewalk happening connection. Cause yeah. I was going to say yeah. it. And so the sidewalk will then connect all the way up to through Jimmy, that part. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have a, a sidewalk yep. from here, you know, into town and then, and then the new sidewalk on, on Junie. Mm-hmm. Excellent. There. Yeah. Yeah. There was going to be a little gap uh-huh. where the <laughs> company is. Yeah. But we, we got that taken care of. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right, and with that, I'll close the public hearing. You guys have any discussion, or are you ready to run through the list? Is it? Well, I, well, what page is it? All right. I'm going to try to find it, otherwise we're going to read them off in there. Lots of scrolling. I'm just going to read off there. <clears throat> All right. We'll start with A. The requested use will not impair the integrity or character of the surrounding or adjoining districts. If you agree with that statement, raise your right hand. That's unanimous. B, the requested use will not be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare. If you agree with that statement, raise your right hand. Unanimous. C, adequate utilities, access streets, drainage, sanitation, and or other necessary facilities have been or are being provided. If you agree with that statement, raise your right hand. Unanimous. D, that adequate measures have been or will be taken to provide ingress and egress so designated as to minimize traffic congestion in the public streets. If you agree with that statement, raise your right hand. And E, that the special use shall, in all other respects, conform to the applicable regulations of the district in which it is located, except as such regulations may, in each instance, be modified by the Board of Adjustment. If you agree with that statement, raise your right hand. It's unanimous, therefore the special use permit is granted. Thank you, board. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that. Yes, we very much appreciate it. This is.
and and explain to you this is the fact, this is the way you deal with it. In other words, just being professional. Well, what I would say is compound ability to be able to continue to grow. Um, having someone that is the gatekeeper, so to speak, but is open for business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's just uh, he's been so professional. Now I say all that to say he's, he'll be glad when this thing's done. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's fine. That's all right. Anyway, On that uh, same token, you know, the board of adjustments is not here to shoot people down or or stop anything either. So you came very well prepared and answers to our questions. So it was easy decision to make. Thank you. <laughs> Of course. All right, we do not have any old business that I'm aware of, nope. so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor, raise your right hand. We are adjourned.